playoff games this weekend. Steph Curry will be back on the floor tonight looking to continue his historic season. And winner-take-all play-in game against the Grizzlies. Curry, as you know, led the NBA in scoring this year for the second time. Yesterday, he was named as one of three MVP finalists, and let's dive into him and his season here a little bit with the two guys who did it with me on radio yesterday. Timmy Legs brought it up, and then Zach Lowe, as always, jumped in. I don't need to tell you if you love basketball. The Low Post podcast is where the conversation takes place. And Zach, just picking up on the thought that Tim Legler gave us yesterday on radio and then earlier on this show here today. The season that Steph Curry has had, carrying this team as he had, what has it done, in your view, for his place in the history of the game? I think it has emphatically opened the door to exactly the conversations that Legs is talking about. One of the greatest players of all time. If he has a few more years like this, he's going to be in that kind of conversation. Is he the second greatest point guard ever? Is he a top 10 or top 12 player? But I do think it's going to take a few more years because unusually for players of that stature. It took five years for Curry to make an all-star team. This will be his seventh all-NBA team this season. I think just in terms of longevity at the top, he's gonna have to pile up a few more. But this season, this season has been a declaration. I am still right there at the top and I got a bunch of years left right there at the top. And if he does have a bunch of years left, Legs is absolutely right. We've been underappreciating how good this guy is and where he's gonna end up ranking. Yeah, you Oleg, know, I, I heard Stephen A. making uh, some uh, note of this yesterday. Like, when you consider the Warriors, maybe they win tonight, maybe they move into the playoffs. It has been a sensational season. When they get everybody back, when, and, and by everybody, I guess I mean Clay Thompson, do you think Steph has more championships in his future? This, the, you, you put one more great piece on this, and we all certainly hope, knock on wood, that Clay is healthy. Are we looking at more titles for Steph in the future? You know, to say definitively yes is difficult because, you know, look, these teams are pairing superstars up on a regular basis. Every summer, there's another couple pairing up. You don't know how long Brooklyn's going to be together, how long are AD and LeBron going to play. So they'll be in the mix, but can they actually get it across the finish line? It's tough to say. As far as the conversation with Steph Curry and where he belongs historically, I'm not the definitive judge. I'm saying this is exactly where guys need to be ranked. It's so subjective. All I'm saying is we have to recalibrate these lists and we have to start rethinking thinking where Steph Curry belongs on these lists because you're talking about a guy at age 27 as a two-time MVP and a two and a champion accepting Kevin Durant to come in and really living in his shadow for several years in Golden State and then having a year of injuries after that and he sacrificed an awful lot in terms of personal accolades and the way he was going to be viewed you know Durant got those two finals MVPs not Steph Curry so now after all that time to revisit it in his early 30s and actually have the best offensive stretch of his entire career when we thought we'd already seen all of that for me Steph Curry is what he's done this year makes you think about what could have been for him personally over the last four or five years and if he had years like this for the last four even if he gave him a one injury year there's no question that Steph Curry will have played himself up possibly to that top 10 area and certainly a guy now that maybe can solely claim the title as second greatest point guard behind Magic Johnson. It was, it was a really interesting point yesterday. Speaking of historical perspective, I want you both to hear what Charles Barkley said when he was a guest on this show, Get Up, yesterday with us. If he's able to win three straight series on the road in the West and he's able to beat the Brooklyn Nets, we might have to have a real conversation about the GOAT. We might have to have that. So that was Charles Barkley talking about LeBron if he wins three straight series on the road in the West and then beats that big three from Brooklyn. I will put it in the form of a question, Zach Lowe. What would it mean for LeBron's place in history? Look, I, I think Charles is, is right on it. I actually think the bubble championship clouded the GOAT conversation for the first time. That's four titles for LeBron. 10 finals appearance. For some reason, LeBron's losses in the finals are held against him. Michael's losses in the earlier rounds of the playoffs are just sort of part of his journey to being the GOAT. I think that fourth championship, I think it changed the GOAT discussion from it's at least an argument. You just can't yell and scream, 6-0 in the finals, 6-0 in the finals, 6-0 in the finals, and it's over. Now, Char, a fifth title, a fifth title, I think it comes pretty close to even. And look, statistically, it's not going to be close by the end of LeBron's career. He's going to have, have lapped Michael in almost every category.
Yeah, having played many more seasons, of course, Michael played three years of college. We, sure. I'm just trying to prevent all the people who are going to start yelling and screaming that before they get a chance to do it. Timmy Legler, final thought. How about that? If LeBron does it and beats those guys in Brooklyn, what will it mean? Well, I think the conversation has already been changed basically over the last decade. Prior to what LeBron did in the last decade, it was a very short conversation. Like if I saw you in the hallway in Bristol Green, we'd say, hey, how's it going as we're passing by? That's a brief conversation. That's about how long the conversation was about who the greatest player of all time was prior to the last decade. Now it'd be a conversation if I ran into you about your Jets or my Washington football team. We would have some long conversations about that. And that's what the conversation has become. LeBron James has thrust himself into it. It's very subjective. I still think Jordan's the greatest of all time for me, but I'm biased. I played against that guy for an entire decade. He won six rings in my 10 years in the league. Obviously, I'm going to be a little bit biased, but LeBron James has already thrust himself into that. And look, if he pulls this off this postseason, yes, the conversation gets a little bit longer, and that chair he's sitting in gets a little bit taller next to the one that Michael Jordan already occupies by himself at the head of the table. All right, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Let's see, he's got a long way to go to get The game speaks for itself. Curry way downtown. Bang! Steph is doing everything! The confidence is always there. I feel like if I shoot that shot, I'm going to make it every single time. It's too many moves, you just can't stay in front of that. Oh, Steph Curry with a circus shot. I have a lot to accomplish. I don't have anything to prove. What a year Steph Curry has had as I bring Tim Legler into the conversation. Steph and the Warriors versus John Morant and the Grizzlies tonight for the final playoff spot in the NBA this season. Legs, let's look at some over-unders at what we expect tonight. Steph, three points, three-point shots at 6.5. So six and a half, over-under on threes tonight for Steph Curry. I'm going over on threes for Steph Curry, and part of that reason is because I think when you take a look at defensively Memphis, their bigs are going to have a more difficult time getting up on these ball screens than a lot of teams, and I think Steph Curry is going to get some space. It's going to get hot. He's lit these guys up before. I think he goes for seven or more threes. How about five and a half assists over under for Steph tonight? Yeah, that should be easy, and I think he's going to get several of those early in the game because Memphis will come out with the right approach. They're going to blitz him on every ball screen, and that's going to lead to Steph Curry giving the ball up, uh, which is going to lead to some open shots for guys. So I think Steph Curry gets that number fairly easily tonight against Memphis. And then finally, how about points? 38-and-a-half is the over-under on Steph. Which way do we go? Yeah, that's a high number, Greedy. When we start predicting guys, basically, are going to get 40 points. That's where I draw the line a little bit. I mean, that's an enormous number uh, to, to predict an over on. He, he might do it. I'm not going to be shocked by it. But I think more likely, you know, you see somewhere in that 30, 35 range, 40 is such a high number. I have a hard time telling people to go play some money on a guy getting that in a specific game. All right, fair enough. But that said, you were the one who made the point on my radio show yesterday, and it sort of took my show in an entirely different direction from what I was expecting, and it was extremely well made. Oh, here you are over here. Um, about Steph Curry and what this season has meant and done for his place in the history of the game. And I would love you to make that here because I thought it was an extremely interesting way to look at this. Well, I just got to thinking about it watching him play this year and how remarkable, remarkable it was for him to dial it back to basically the same level he was at as an MVP a number of years ago. Most guys are not going to revert back to that form. He's done it, particularly after injuries. And here's what I started thinking about. You know, at the time he won those back-to-back -back MVPs, and one of those was unanimous, by the way, he was 27 years old. And then he accepted Kevin Durant coming to that team. And, and in a way, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry both cannibalized each other's chances at individual accolades for team success. And he won a couple more championships with Kevin Durant. But the guy was just entering the prime years. He was a unanimous MVP, a two-time MVP, and he was never mentioned as an all-time great. He was talked about as greatest shooter we've ever seen, most entertaining player in the league, all of those things. But Greeny, if you think about it, he was never really put on those lists of all-time greats. He wasn't talked about in a discussion with maybe the second greatest point guard of all time behind Magic Johnson. He just wasn't. And we didn't know if he was ever going to get there because his career went in a different direction by adding Durant to that team. So by doing what he has done this year 
and reverting back to one of the best players in the league, and now you see he's one of the three finalists for MVP, it makes you wonder, what would Steph Curry have done over the last five years or so if he never got Kevin Durant in Golden State? And, you know, Klay Thompson was healthy for those several years if Durant wasn't there. The team success they would have had with what Curry is doing right now makes you think this is what it would have looked like, and if that's the case, he probably has at least one more MVP. He may have another ring or two, and now everything is different when you start talking about ranking him historically. I think it's time, based on what he did this year, and that Lakers game cemented it for me, because he faced an elite defense and still rose to the occasion on that stage. Steph Curry now has to be regarded on those short lists of the greatest who have ever done it. It's, it's an excellent point, and I completely agree with every word that you said. With that thought in mind, because you touched on it, he was announced yesterday as one of the three finalists for MVP this year with Jokic and with Joel Embiid. Who gets your vote? I think I'm going to go with Jokic. It was Embiid for me most of the year, but I do understand the, the argument that, hey, look, the guy missed time with injuries. That also probably took LeBron out of the mix. It took James Harden out of the mix. Uh, so you have Embiid still in the mix, but I think Jokic, based on the fact that, look, 26, 11, and 8, uh, you know, ridiculous numbers, particularly what, what he shoots from the field, from the three, the way he controls the game as a passer for that team. They were also 22 games over 500. That all has to play in. And then the last one, and I think this is a good message.